What's going on YouTube? My name is Lee Brandt. I'm a developer advocate here at Okta. Today we're going to talk about why GUIs suck and CLIs are just better. Let's check it out. I don't know why I pointed over there. That was... Sorry. So I've always tended to lean towards command line interfaces over graphical user interfaces anyway. Um, maybe it's just because I kind of cut my teeth in the Windows 95, Windows 3.1 days back in Windows 95A, if you remember that, um, before it was called Windows 95A. <laughs> um, and I kind of split my time. So like one of my first jobs was um, building machines for everyone that was in the office that I worked at. So um, I would build Linux machines and I would build uh, Windows machines and I spent a lot of time on the command line because when things went wrong in the GUI you pretty much had to drop to the CLI and things went wrong a lot in the GUIs back in the day um, so it wasn't unusual during a Linux install to not even be able to get the X window system to boot up and you'd have to go into the command line log in through the command line get the right driver, put in a floppy disk, if you remember what those are, really dating myself. So, um, put in a floppy disk, get the right video driver installed, compiled into the kernel, maybe even, and then you could actually get X Windows to come up and you could actually do stuff. Now, don't get me wrong, I love my windowing systems. I mean, I'm using Ubuntu right now. Um, that's my daily driver, so 99% of my time is spent in Linux, <clears throat> and it's much better now, uh, and I love my GNOME back, you know, my GNOME windowing system. Um, I wouldn't want to have to CD into folders all the time, and I like being able to just go and click in my home folder and click around in there and find what I'm looking for. I like that, um, but sometimes like poorly designed GUIs can make a really simple task way more complicated than it needs to be. So the first thing that I'll say about CLIs is that they're centrally located. Um, generally you open up your terminal window and there you are. Any CLI you need to use, whether you're using the Git CLI, whether you're using an AWS CLI, Heroku, um, uh, create React App CLI, or any of those things, NPM, um, any of those things that you're using, you're using right there from the command line. You don't need to open up another program. You don't need to wait for some other GUI to load. You don't need to wait through some splash screen or anything like that to get to doing the work that you're trying to do, which is, you know, committing code or uh, creating a new a new app in Heroku or adding dynos to an existing app or creating an S3 bucket in AWS. You don't need to wait for the, for the browser to come up. You don't need to wait for some GUI window to come up. <clears throat> it's right there in your command line window. You just start typing AWS commands or you just start typing Heroku commands, right? Um, so everything is right there and it's super lightweight. So the terminal really isn't much in the way of a GUI. It is kind of a GUI. I mean, most people who are using terminals now are using a terminal emulator. They're not actually using the terminal. They're using a terminal emulator inside of a window manager of some sort. So whether you're on a Mac or if you're on the Windows Linux subsystem or uh, PowerShell in Windows or um, like I use Oh My Z Shell quite a bit, uh, which is basically just a package on top of Z Shell. Um, it has a lot of great features and customizations. Once I've got that open, everything is there. Um, whether I'm using AWS, Git, or Heroku, or whatever it is, it's all right there. Um, a lot of times, some of the GUI tools can have kind of confusing menus. Like, like I didn't know that creating a new Git repo was under, um, under my Git repos, create, drop, you know, I have to go three levels deep into a menu item just to create a new repo. Um, instead of I'm in a folder and I type get init and we're done, right? 
Um, things like that are a little bit hokey. Now, yes, GUIs can make some complicated things um, that you need to do easy, but for the most part, they're usually, the commands are usually pretty self-explanatory. They are, I mean, the GUIs, or the CLIs that I've used recently are very similar to what I would say if I wanted to, like, you know, get clone in a repo name. That's it. Um, that's what I wanted to do. Um, now, I do need to mem remember that it's called get clone and not get uh, pull down or get copy or whatever. Um, but even in a GUI, you still have to remember what the command, what the, what the menu item is. And may you, may, you may have to remember, wow, you may have to remember that it's under file, new, repo, and then type in the name into a, a window, a little pop-up window, and you have to wait for the pop-up window. And <clears throat> Not ideal. So the fact that everything's right there in the CLI, and I know people that I work with now that do just, do just about everything from the command line. Like they code from the command line with Vim. They get their email from the command line with Mutt. Um, some of them, if you're even really hardcore, browse the web with a text-based web browser, but wow. Um, <laughs> but still, um, everything's right there. You don't have to wait for another program to load. Another thing that I love about CLIs is that generally help is just a few keystrokes away. If you're searching for help with a git command, you type git, the command name, and dash dash help, and there's a nice big text explanation without waiting for some GUI to load. Um, a lot of the times in a GUI, the help menu may be under about. Um, it may be under file preferences, and then there's a help menu item under that window. Uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of different places where help might be. Generally, most CLIs, it's just dash dash help after the command that you want help with. <clears throat> now you can do git dash dash help, but there's going to be a lot of stuff there. <clears throat> but um, even with, you know, being a, a Linux guy, um, when I first got started, man pages were kind of a steady diet for somebody just getting started. Um, it was just, you know, man PS to figure out all the switches that I can send to, to, to the PS command or whatever command I was trying to do. Um, even if it's something like a CD command, maybe I don't remember what CD is. I'm not used to the command line. So I type CD dash or man CD and I can get a little Linux document that tells me what arguments need to be passed to that command, how they need to be formatted, what switches I can do to add stuff to. Um, <clears throat> so help being just a few keystrokes away can be super helpful whether you're using just dash dash help or you're deep down in the bowels of something um, consuming man pages like their pizza and, and diet soda. So, <clears throat> GUIs, a lot of the times they'll put them in the same places, but I've seen them either in about, or I've seen them in under, under file and preferences. Um, I've also seen them under about with a link off to a web page that now has to load and all the graphics for that web page need to load for you to get the help that you need. And sometimes help is just takes you to the main help page. Now you have to find the command that you wanted and get help on that command. Or you could just type the command that you want to run and dash dash help and get focused contextual help with just that command. So that's one of the places where I think CLIs really outshine GUIs. Another place where CLIs really shine is the fact that they're scriptable. And this is one of the things that like with help, help's usually there in a GUI, okay? Um, but you really, it's really hard to script something out in a GUI. Like let's say that there's a series of commands that I generally always run together. Let's say my team has decided that what we're going to do when we merge to master is we're going to pull on the, on the branch that we're on to make sure that we've gotten any changes that somebody else might've pushed to that branch then we're going to do a rebase 
then we're going to merge into master. I can write a little script that is just my corporate merge that does all those steps for me. And I don't have to type, type, get pull branch name, get rebase to master, get, get merged to master. I don't, I don't need to switch over to master and then none of that stuff do I have to worry about. I can script all that back out and I can even script out rules that say, um, Hey, run this, this pre-commit check. Uh, now you can do that with pre-commit hooks in Git as well. Um, but I can do a specific thing in my own little script that like something I know that I do a lot that maybe none of the rest of my team does. I don't want to put that in a Git, like a GitHub pre-commit hook. Let me just do that to my local thing. So when I do my corporate merge, it checks for this thing that I always do. Um, same thing with AWS. Um, <clears throat> the fact is, is if I know I want to set up an, an S3 bucket and then I want to secure it, I can create a script that will create the S3 bucket for me, set the proper permissions, all the things I need to do, and maybe even upload a little help file into that S3 bucket for anybody that's going to be using it, that they can get help on what kind of permissions you need and what kind of, what the permissions are set to. Like maybe anybody can read pictures in this S3 bucket, but only administrators can put images in this S3 bucket, whatever it is. Um, so there's lots of things that you can do where you can combine those commands and you don't have to drop, find a menu, click on it, do this thing, then go back to the menu and find the next thing that you need to do and then go back to the menu and find the next command that you want to run. And now it's all where you want it to be, um, which can, you know, be 10, 12 clicks in where in my case, it's just corporate merge and it just executes a corporate merge. So. Um, that thing is just something that GUIs are not even capable of, um, and CLIs, it's really simple. Now, do you need to learn a little bit of bash scripting or whatever your shell script language is? Um, if it's PowerShell scripting or whatever, do you need to learn a little bit of that? Yeah, but if you're going to use a CLI, you might as well learn how to make it do your bidding, um, on a much more massive scale. Uh, so... Again, that's just one of those things that CLIs can do that GUIs just can't even do. One of the last places that I can think of that CLIs really outshine um, GUIs is aliases. For my CLI, I tend to use Z shell with oh my Z shell installed, and they have a package for Git that comes with a bunch of pre-made aliases. <clears throat> for instance, when I want to check out a branch, I don't have to type git checkout. Now there's not, that's not a lot of typing. Um, but if you're one of those people like me who has a tendency to maybe, um, type checkout with C H E K C O U T instead of C K, um, then G C O is a really good, um, alias for that. So I just type G C O dash B in the name of the branch. And now I've created a new branch and checked out into it. So, um, aliases can really speed things up for you when they're only three or four letter, um, uh, three or four letter aliases. Um, one of the ones that I use all the time is GLOG, G log, um, which is actually get log with a bunch of switches that give me a nice, pretty timeline with branches off of it and all the comments right there in the command line. And I don't need to go to a GUI to see that. I just type G log and I get this pretty little graph like you would get in a GUI. It's just all made with ASCII characters instead of with lines and boxes. So <clears throat> those uh, aliases can really help um, speed things up through your daily work for me to just type uh, G log or GST, which is the get status command that can, those really help and my fingers just do it. GST, bam, done. GLOG, done. Um, and I'm just looking at it. So that's another place where I think, um, CLIs really outshine, uh, GUIs. So what's the verdict here? I know this is called why GUIs suck and CLIs are better. Um, part of that was just to kind of, uh, 
a little jab back at my colleague Heather for her why CLIs suck and GUIs are better. Um, but <clears throat> it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to forsake all GUIs from here till the end of time. Um, obviously, GUIs have their place. Um, I still tend to et edit documents in GUIs like Notepad or text edit. Um, I do use Vim for some minor edits, but I haven't taken the time to, to learn all the keyboard shortcuts. A friend of mine told me once that uh, get, or Vim plays like a video game. You need to know all the key combinations and you can move around like a master. And I've seen guys do it. Um, but I still use GUIs for that. I obviously still use GUIs for the browser. Um, for even recording this screencast, I'm not using a command line recorder um, like some people I work with might actually use command line recorders. Um, but I still like GUIs for certain things. But for my everyday stuff, especially for things like um, NPM package installs or even NuGet package installs when I'm doing .NET, I tend to go down to the command line mostly because I'm working in Visual Studio Code most of the time with .NET Core. So when I want to install a new NuGet package, I can just use the package install command. And yes, I have to go look up what the whole name of it is. And I can't just search through a list and, oh, that's the one I think. I have to know the name and cut and paste it into my terminal window. But I think that's a small price to pay for not even having to leave my terminal for most things. Um, if I was still really hardcore, I'd probably be checking my mail through Mutt, though. Yeah, that may be my next little project. So, hopefully you found this informative, maybe even a little bit mildly entertaining. Um, I can guarantee you there's some people watching right now that have smoke coming out of their ears. Cool. Leave comments down below. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that little bell icon so you get notified when we put out more stuff that's going to annoy you. Um, for those of you who agree with me, um, if there's something else I mentioned down below besides, you know, its scriptability and the ability to use uh, aliases and get help with dash dash help, if there's something else that I missed that are like, this is another reason why I love GUIs or why I love CLIs over GUIs, Leave a comment about that down below, too. If you like GUIs better than CLIs, leave a comment down below saying why you hate CLIs. That's totally fine. That's a totally valid opinion. I just have a tendency to uh, favor the CLI over a GUI, uh, much to the chagrin of some of my colleagues. So, uh, what are you going to do? Can't please everyone all the time. So, again... Hit the notifications, subscribe down below, leave your comments down below, um, drag me over the coals. I'm totally fine with it. Um, until next time, we'll see you back here. Have fun.